All right, good evening, everyone. Happy New Year 2020. Appreciate those of you who are joining in the live. <clears throat> Hope everyone's evening and day has gone uh, so far uh, very well. Uh, good evening, Andrea. Uh, Dedrick, hello. Raji, how are you, sister? Shonda, hello, sister. Hey, Ishmael, what's going on, my brother? Um, Give a few more minutes, uh, a couple minutes before we jump right in. Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, just wanted to, uh, as promised, to read another testimony, another testimony of deliverance. Um, seven pages is what I have here, and um, I want to share with you, those of you who are just joining in, if you have not, uh, what's going on, Sister Loretta? Uh, if, you, if you have not... Um, done so and you would like to share uh, your testimony uh how god has delivered you from uh abc under the uh teaching of g craig lewis you can email me at seiko woods at yahoo.com that's s-a-i-k-o woods with an s at yahoo.com you can uh share your testimony with me there if you wish to keep it anonymous uh that is fine uh i share these testimonies for those who are um uh, for, for the encouragement and blessing for those who have come out uh, letting people know that they are not alone and uh, also encouraging and emboldening other people uh, who may be on the fence of speaking up or or coming forward and speaking out so that they, too, uh, will have the encouragement necessary to do so. So if you'd like to share your testimony, you'd like to have your testimony, um, you know, uh, given uh, to, to the body of Christ as a whole, um, that'd be fine. You can just email me and do that. Uh, as well, or if you like to have a, an interview, uh, video interview, you can do that as well. Uh, just reach out to me, and uh, you can um, we can set up a time to do that. I have a couple of interviews uh, scheduled uh, for this month. I'm uh, looking forward to more, uh, particularly this weekend uh, on Sunday, I believe, this Sunday at 3 p.m. Uh, we have a, another guest uh, that will be uh, joining my wife and I. And we will we will uh, uh, be talking with this uh, this couple, uh, having them to share their testimony of being former members of ABC. So uh, people are, are are God is drawing people out. He's causing people to uh, have their eyes open to the truth, um, and it's only by God's grace that people are now seeing what's going on. Uh, some people's um, eyes have been open, you know, a, a little, a little under two, three months. Some people it took five, six, seven, eight years. But you know what? However long it took, praise God that your eyes have been open. Better late than never. That's what I'll say. Um, but don't allow, don't allow the enemy to try to um, cause you to feel guilty and cause you to, you know, um, to regret in the sense of, you know, making you feel that you are um, less than and important in God's eyes, anything like that. Don't allow the enemy to do that. Uh, use that as an opportunity to share your testimony with those who have come out of the very thing that you too have come out or those who may be trying to come out but don't know how to come out. So this is what this platform is for. This is what this avenue of ministry is for. So I want to encourage those of you who have not done so. Again, please do so. Please consider emailing me uh, your testimony. And uh, again, you can keep it anonymous. You can you can uh, detect you know deduct uh, whatever information you do not wish to have uh, uh, publicized. That's fine. I would totally respect that. Uh, but most of the emails I receive, I, I, I share them uh, with the, with the body of Christ, with the public, for the purpose only for of encouragement uh, and and to uh, uplift the body of Christ. And anything that I see that, that I may not want to have um, disclosed, and I don't do that. So I want to keep people's. Uh, anonymity uh, confidential as much as possible as well. So uh, please consider doing that either by email or by video uh, interview. Whatever feels comfortable for you, whatever the Lord leads you to do, please do that. Also, also, if you'd like to support this ministry, you'd like to um, uh, financially support this ministry, you can do so. Um, first of all, by uh, liking the, uh, the the video when it goes on YouTube, subscribe to the video. You can like the video here. You can share the video. This is how the truth gets out. Um, if you'd like to support this ministry financially, you can consider doing that. Uh, you can just go to my cash app um, and just look up my name, 
and it has the dollar sign and then Seiko Woods. Uh, consider doing that as well. There's no pressure for that. Um, but like I've said before, it takes money to do ministry. Uh, consider this to be a labor of love, but we are striving to make quality videos and to um, do other things that we can assist in to minister to the body of Christ uh, as a whole. So if you've been blessed by it, if you would consider doing that, we greatly uh, appreciate it. Now, also, if you'd like to purchase merchandise, book chapter verses, you see here on the top of my head, uh, if you'd like to get a, uh, a catalog of merchandise, inbox me. Uh, I will send that information to you. Uh, let us know what your size uh, or shipment information is, and um, we will get those orders uh, expedited to you as soon as possible. So with that being said, I want to get right into this uh, email. Let me say also, I did listen to G. Craig Lewis's uh, True Church Perspective podcast. I, I don't know uh, what else to say other than the fact that, how can I put it? Um, if he's not listening to things going on online about what I'm saying about him or what other people are saying about him uh, regarding his quote unquote ministry and, and the fact that people are leaving, and then he must be the fourth member of the Trinity because he's knowing a lot of stuff uh, that he would not know unless he's been listening and watching the videos that I've been putting up or somebody been relaying it to him. But since he said that he does not watch it, we know that's, that's not true because he's admitted that, uh, just last month prior to that, he said he wasn't watching any, you know, going online, checking about what people say about him. He doesn't put his eyes or ears to it in November. Then he had to admit that he had. So anyway, but um, don't know if I want to respond to that. It was only 30 minutes um, of nothing. Um, so, but I do have the audio queued up. Um, if I wanted to give some response to it, uh, I believe those of you in the thread, when you saw the, the, uh, the audio link and the podcast link, uh, posted, you shared your thoughts and your thoughts were on point. Hey, Lavina, Merry New Year to you too. <laughs> um, so anyway, let me get right into this email. I received this email um, actually earlier this week on on uh, on Monday, um, but I did not have opportunity to read it, it due to its length, and I wanted to give my my time and attention to reading it because that's what I that's what I do to all the emails that I do receive. Um, I do get an influx of emails every day uh, during the course of the day, uh, but also since I work um, during the day, getting home in the evenings. Uh, I don't check all my emails and uh, and much, much much more do I respond to them until I'm able to uh, get some time and attention to it, which is preferably on the weekend. So uh, since the, today was a holiday, <clears throat> yesterday I did not have to work as well. Um, I was able to read this email in its entirety and uh, it really blessed my soul. And so I wanted to bless yours as well, too. So let me get right to reading it. Um, this person says, and I'm quoting, this is quoting the statements now, to my brother in Christ, to start this email off, and again, this is a, this is a fairly long email, so um, please bear with me due to this length. It's a seven-page seven page email. So it says, Do, to my brother in Christ, to start this email off, I first want to tell you how I found out about you and your videos. It was a typical Sunday when my husband decided to play a true church perspective sermon by G. Craig Lewis. He hadn't played one out loud, quote unquote, for a while, considering the fact that I was telling him that I didn't agree with the stuff he was teaching. I'll get to that. He was being respectful of my disagreements, although in his mind, he felt like I was rebelling and no longer as one with him. So although I was no longer hearing the false teaching from Lewis, I was constantly hearing it from him. I was pretty much made to feel an error for disagreeing with his teachings, although he respectfully stopped listening to his sermons with me because he would, he would always end up having a small argument over me calling out his error, hypocrisy, or questioning the spirit behind his delivery. But on this particular day, he decided to play it on the speakers instead of his headphones. Don't know why, but okay. As I was listening along, I was constantly just hearing so much contradicting stuff. Stuff that he seems to have changed his opinion on. And of course, just some crazy off the wall. What did he just say stuff? I became fed up and highly bothered listening to this man's ego talk he continued to present as biblical truths. 
My spirit no longer agreed with his spirit. I got my phone and decided to go on Twitter. Even though I don't use any of my social media platforms and haven't used Twitter since college, when I was, when I had, which has been over six years ago, I searched his name, G. Craig Lewis. I immediately saw your post talking about how you were kicked off of Facebook for speaking against him about the Kanye thing. Now, I have been searching for G. Craig Lewis' false teachings exposed since the beginning of this year when God set me free from his mind games. God literally at the snap of his finger removed the veil from my eyes and ears when listening to a DVD, Mommy Manual, and I have been free since. I searched to see if there were anyone out there in the internet world exposing the things about G. Craig Lewis that God had begun to supernaturally reveal to me about him. I was only searching on Google and YouTube, so it was strange for me to get the urge to go on Twitter, which I haven't used in years, on top of years. There are many exposing articles and videos out there, and some confirmed a lot of what God revealed to me, but still nothing to the point of holding him accountable for his error. So it got to a point of where I started to question my own revelations, even though God was confirming all of the unbiblical teachings of Lewis for me. No one was calling him out on, uh, no one was calling him out on his false teachings. This man boldly says some things that smites God and his power, period. I literally felt like I was going crazy because my husband argued against my concerns defending him. Never once did he say, Let's look and study this together and see what the Bible says to help ease my mind. His response was always in the words of G. Craig Lewis or just by saying he found no error by just listening to it. Although I asked many times for us to study the scriptures together on the particular things that were bothering me, <clears throat> he never did or do. He just said, Lewis is a sound doctrine teacher. So I let it go. And just gave back into and just gave back into not seeing him as a false teacher, even though my spirit was telling me something completely different every time I heard a message from him. It got to the point to where I would listen to some of his old DVDs that I had once fascinated with, that I was once fascinated with, and agreed with him on. And I would begin to hear a lot of error in them. I was shook at his huge revelation, at this huge revelation rather. Yet as yet was seeing no fruits of what God had revealed to me. I was going absolutely crazy. I felt like I was in a spiritual battle alone and trying to understand the meaning of it all. Like, why am I all of a sudden dealing with this uneasiness? Why is this man's spirit and message bothering me so much after all these years? To make a long story short and give you the reason for telling you how I found you, I know it was God. I have never heard of you. And you had literally just tweeted it a few days before I saw it. So you started exposing him around the same time that God led me to you. God led me to your tweet through a search bar that led me to your videos. And now I am here writing you. My freedom journey started with the gift purchase from my husband of the Mommy Manual DVD from earlier this year. I was excited to be getting it because at the time I was a quote unquote fan of G. Craig's ministry. I had never, I never had the desire to research anything about him until God opened my eyes. I just listened to his DVDs and sermons with my spouse and that was that. It wasn't until I watched the Mommy Manual DVD that I started to feel uneasy about all this, about the stuff he was saying and even how he was presenting the message. Now granted, I have listened to this stuff for years with my spouse and never had this feeling even though some of the same stuff he taught in the DVD was said many times before. For me, it wasn't, it wasn't just what he was saying, it was also how he was saying it. What also stood out to me watching the DVD was the body language of the women and his wife in particular. The women's body language was very alarming to me. Now, please, let me remind you, I wasn't going into this DVD looking for anything wrong with the DVD of Lewis. I was actually excited upon receiving it and very open to hearing the message. That's what made the entire experience watching it so weird at the time. I was introduced to G. Craig's ministry in college. I would feel a bit confused when certain things were said, but ignored them because 
I felt that they were either small or sounded close enough to the truth to be picky about them. Plus, I was still very much a babe in Christ, although I am a preacher's kid who grew up in the church. I was just starting to focus on building my own relationship and work out my own salvation. One thing I remember vividly about watching Lewis's DVDs is going through a lot of demonic attacks after watching his DVDs to the point where I was afraid to watch them like I was afraid to watch scary movies. I experienced a lot of demonic activity after watching them. I became under attack and my joy in Christ turned into fear of the devil. It was, after his, it, was, it was as if watching his DVDs opened me up to demonic attack because I never experienced anything like it my entire life growing up in the church. I began to live a life overthinking everything that I did and people I communed with. I became super critical of anyone who did anything against what he taught. I didn't necessarily argue with anyone about what he taught, but if they were doing things in opposition of what he taught, I would low-key side-eye them. His DVDs never pointed to Christ or the gospel. I just thought that giving up secular music, living what he called holy, and protecting myself from the corruption of things G. Craig deemed evil was my proof of salvation because that is what he taught. And I'm not putting words in his mouth. The DVDs are proof. Although I thought I was saved, saved, I never genuinely felt the assurance of my salvation because I was constantly being anxious about everything I did or surrounded myself with. I was anxiously striving to assure my salvation. It was not a peaceful or loving situation. Living, looking back, I see now there were no fruits of the spirit because I lacked love for others and I had no peace within myself. Although I wasn't actively living a lifestyle of sin. I was sinning without even realizing it. My parents would tell anyone. I was literally a child who never got a kick out of indulging in sinful things. I'm not or was not perfect. But I never chased sin. So I know my uneasiness wasn't because of what I was doing externally. It had everything to do with my sin internally. It seems it seems that it's so much easier for Christians to call out and focus on external sins because they feel that is what proves their salvation. But God knows the internal sins really reveal the heart behind your quote unquote good intent, good actions. Now that I'm truly saved, not just doing stuff to appear to be saved, and I have truly grasped what it means to be saved through God's grace, through the faith, through faith of Jesus Christ and him alone. I have been experiencing truth like I had never experienced before. This entire year, God has been renewing my mind and freeing me of a lot of false teachings from my childhood and G. Craig Lewis. I truly live in assurance of my salvation and no longer live striving in hope to be saved. I live knowing without a shadow of a doubt that I'm saved, which inspires me every day to do the right thing and have the right heart when doing it. You know what prompted this revelation? G. Craig Lewis's DVD. God used the DVD to expose Lewis to me and then show me myself. I was ugly and not operating in the woman God created me to be. I wasn't being myself. I was being a programmed version of someone else and God did not like that. I felt ashamed because it caused a lot of unnecessary tension in my life among others that should have never been there. After being led by God and the Holy Spirit revealing the only gospel to me, God has been making everything and every experience in my life clear. I no longer feared nothing or no one, not even Satan. I became truly free in who I was as a believer, who I was created to be, and who I belong to. I live a life of protection and assurance that nothing and no one can remove the can remove me from God's hands because I am chosen by him to live out this life of salvation and walk in the light of Christ. As a woman, I know I don't need to clear it through my spouse or get validated by man because I belong to the one who saved me. I was a child of God before I ever became a wife. Before all of this, I remember having a convo with my husband about G. Craig's teachings of a wife not hearing from God and only having access to God through her husband. 
I made the most foolish agreement in saying, quote, it is as if I am trusting you with my salvation, end quote. Looking back at me saying that hurts to the core. Jesus is the only one who died and gives you access to God, no matter if you are a wife to a man. When I said it, he didn't disagree or correct the blatant error because he knew that is exactly what it meant by a woman only having access to God through her husband. But when I said it, I felt some type of way. But of course, because I was in fear of dishonoring my husband or being a Jesse, I went along with the foolishness. He, that is G. Craig, literally teaches women cannot interpret scripture without a man. Women cannot hear from God unless through their spouse. Women are more prone to deception, so don't listen to them. And women are just created to belong to a man and do what he say. I was believing all of that crap. All the while, God, while God was using me, a woman, to help so many people all around me. There was proof and evidence in God's use of me and my salvation because others tell me all the time. He was giving me wisdom to speak into others' lives and see things in their life they couldn't even see. I would constantly be at war with what I was being taught and what God was trying to do with me because the, the, the way that he used me, I was being told was an error and not of God. So every time God would nudge at my heart at things that didn't sound right, I ignored it in fear that I was being deceived by Satan. I have always had discernment and have always been gifted at discerning spirits. But when it came to Lewis's teachings, I buried them and blew out my light because I thought I was not supposed to have I was, I was not supposed to have them, let alone use them. No matter how much God proved his power in my life, I allowed Lewis and my husband to cause my spirit turmoil. I was more afraid of Satan than I was trusting in who God created me to be and in who and in what God promises me as a believer. Protection, wisdom, freedom, equality, love. And I can go on and on. I say it. I said all of that to say the Bible speaks of a great deception that if possible, it could even deceive the elect. We're living in the great deception where many are infatuated with scripture and see it as more of a history book to dissect and study and not the prophetic word that was given as a source of life and freedom. Many people are teaching and preaching from it as if it is a textbook not really understanding how to become spiritually connected to it through the living word, Jesus Christ. That is how so many teach the Bible in error because the spirit behind their teachings are not through the Holy Spirit of the living word of God, but through a false spirit disguised as light. All of these teachers are part of the great deception. When your ministry's foundation is built on instilling fear, or instilling the fear of Satan instead of the freedom given in the gospel of Christ, you are operating in a false spirit. God doesn't want us fearing Satan as if Satan is more powerful than him. G. Craig's entire ministry was built off of those principles. He introduced Satan to be more powerful than God as if doing things to get rid of him was enough to save us. As if what we do keeps us protected. As if God has no power over Satan and leaves us unprotected to get destroyed by Satan. Back to my point about my demonic attacks after watching his DVDs. God revealed to me that his DVDs gave Satan more power because they instilled fear of him. Satan thrives off of fear. Since his DVDs, the industry has gotten more demonic, bolder, stronger, and the world has become unapologetically demonic. Not just the world, but the church too. Of course, not God's true bride, but those playing church. The truth behind hip hop DVDs gave Satan an opening into the minds of many people and also provided a distraction for believers to truly live in the power God promises them through his Holy Spirit. The truth behind hip hop was never God's message to his people and the message did not bring salvation to anyone. Using fear tactics to no longer do things that appear to be evil does not make you saved. Satan fooled so many with those DVDs, yet God still kept his chosen in his hands in spite of. It is sad to see so many people defend clear deception, manipulation, and sin, all because they feel it changed people's lives. 
I personally want my life changed through the salvation and gospel of Jesus Christ, not because I'm afraid of the devil and his ways. Lewis is a conspiracy theorist who used fear tactics to create a cult following, period. His following goes beyond his physical church building. I have never attended, yet his teachings has done some damage to me spiritually and now continues to do damage to my marriage. Trust me, I'm living in the same thing that women at his church are living in. My marriage is on the brinks and I am the one being blamed for it. It is time for believers to wake up and stop thinking man has the power to save them because no man does. Some truths are obvious truths and just because you heard it for the first time from someone doesn't make them more special than you to God. It was your previous lack of discernment of not knowing then God revealed something he needed you to know at that moment that he wanted you to receive. He has the power to send a message through any and everybody. A true believer knows you never credit the messenger for the message or revelation you receive from the message. I received the revelation from Lewis's message initially about not pledging a sorority. Then God used another message of Lewis's to reveal his spiritual error. It is God and God alone who does the revealing, not man. He can use a sinner, but it doesn't make them a saint. He can use a donkey, but it doesn't make it wise. God already knows the heart of every man he uses to send anyone a message. This is why he calls us to have discernment and trust no one but him. Some truth doesn't make you right. Calling out the sins of others doesn't make you more holy or even holy at all. All of these Christians putting on all these Christians, excuse me, putting any of these preachers on a pedestal, including those of the Bible, don't realize how insulting it is to God to do that when it was him who sent the message and him who allowed us to receive it. Only God can truly reveal his word. He has different methods of doing it, but all credit still belongs to him, not a G. Craig Lewis. It is God who reveals everything to us at his appointed time, so we should never be comfortable in what we think we know because we don't know everything God wants us to know. We should always be ready to receive whatever God wants us to, wants to reveal to us so that we don't so that we don't yet know yet. So no, we should we should always be ready to receive whatever God wants to reveal to us that we don't know yet, because he is the molder and we are the clay. He is trying to create in all his children a clean heart, and that takes time and a lot of teachings and experiences to do so. If you get shaken by a new, rep, new level of wisdom he gives you because of your dedication to something your flesh led you to, don't wallow in that shame. God revealed it to you for your good and for his glory. Rejoice in it. Thank God for his love that, that won't allow us to fail. True believers believe in the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, in the saving power of Jesus Christ, and in the ruling power of God. No devil in hell can rise up against the Holy Trinity, but every devil in hell can rise up against anyone living a life seeking spiritual protection through man. His DVDs instilled a fear of Satan, which gave Satan an open door of attacks in my life. My experience after watching his DVDs were not of God. There was no peace, freedom, or assurance, even though I did everything he said. There was only turmoil, confusion, judgment, and living a life bound to overthinking everything I felt and did. I didn't understand why until God came and snatched me out of it. I was chosen to be saved, and God knew I had to go through everything I went through for a purpose. Although I was deceived, God was there with me in that deception. My heart has always been genuine, and I never expected nothing in return for my belief in Christ. I just wanted him. So in the midst of all the deceptions and craziness in my life, I stopped fearing Satan and just started completely seeking God for everything. Every doubt, fear, and turmoil I experienced, I saw God. I stopped trying to do what I thought would cause those things to go away and started seeking him first. And he always revealed what needed to be revealed and healed what needed to be healed and corrected what needed to be corrected. I said all of that to say, 
True freedom in Christ is simply the gospel of Jesus Christ, which we are all joint heirs to. This is not what G. Craig teaches. He never taught it. He has always been an error in error since the beginning of his message. Discernment is not knowing of right from wrong. It is knowing right from almost right. An atheist can live a life knowing and living right from wrong and having good morals. But your fleshly discernment can only get you so far. You need spiritual biblical discernment that can only be given through Christ. Biblical discernment is having the Holy Spirit to expose that 1% major error the enemy hides in that 99% truth. That 1% error is that one thing that will completely cause you to reject the very thing that you need to get everything else right. And it is the, the saving power of Jesus Christ. When it comes to G. Craig Lewis, many would not catch that 1%, although his error is much greater, because they are too busy holding on to what they think is the 99% truth, when in reality, the veil just hasn't been removed by the Holy Spirit for them to see the complete error and blasphemy in his so-called truth. His 1% error people are overlooking for the 99% truth they believe he teaches is the 1% error that rejects God and his power, Christ and his purpose, and the free gift of the Holy Spirit. The 1% error rejects the true gospel of Jesus Christ, period. And there's no way around that, no matter how many DVDs he makes that quote unquote helps someone. If they never receive the truth of that 1%, then he is not sent by God to teach no one his word. Sir, you have confirmed what God has been trying to reveal to me about his ministry for a while now. But it wasn't until the beginning of this year when my husband brought me the Mommy Manual DVD did I start heeding to God's revelation because that is when he showed me Lewis's message in a different set of eyes and ears. God showed me everything I needed to see to break free from this man's false teachings. I am dedicated to raising my kids through my own conviction, not because I'm in fear of the world. I biblically submit to my husband and his teachings to serve God, not his ego. That biblical submission no longer puts him before God in my life. Although we may disagree on this man's ministry, he may feel like I'm being Jesse, but I know who I am. God is not a respecter of persons, and anyone who teaches or believes that should know that mind is being given over to the doctrine of the devil because the devil felt as if he was greater and strived to become God over others and was above reproach. No one is above reproach. And no husband should ever think their role as a leader and a wife's submission means for her to be silent and blindly follow them or stroke an ego God spoke against having in his word. Stroking in man's ego doesn't qualify as respect. A godly woman being submissive and supportive of her husband would never go against the word of God and vice versa. She was called by God to be a man's helpmeet. And God would never encourage her to tempt her husband to sin by encouraging pride and egos which are against God's word. A godly help me will have that hard conversation with her husband. God will use her to send a message to her husband as he sees fit. God won't encourage her to manipulate her husband with sex and her womanly ways to get what she wants out of him. If he re rebuked Jezebel for doing that, why would God encourage his own daughters in Christ to do it. These were things that were taught in the mommy manual that raised an eyebrow for me. I don't have the desire to manipulate anyone to get me to give me what I want, even if God blessed me with the tools to do it. I desire to walk in the love of God by being honest and truthful to all. I don't desire to be a stumbling block for anyone, especially my husband, the man that I admire so much. So as believers, it is clear we are not supposed to stroke and support the sin of homosexuality. But are we supposed to stroke and support the sin of egos and pride? No, a sin is a sin is a sin. And I refuse to partake or encourage any of it. The message that Lewis teaches is saying that Christian principles don't apply to women because their spouse should become their God. But. Scripture says a husband should be leading in understanding and knowing that his wife is a joint heir to the throne. Christian principles apply to her just as much as him. 
She can seek and she will find. She can pray and he will answer. She can be used for his glory outside of being a wife and a mother. He is literally causing the wife and husband to sin because God said you shouldn't have another God before him. And you should definitely not be placing yourself in the position of God in anyone's life. Just ask Lucifer what happened to him when he did that. Being a husband doesn't make you God. Men are at risk of deception just as women. And your wife is your assigned help me to help bring you and keep you close to God. Not sit back and watch you slowly destroy yourself or get destroyed by Satan through another man. Being a husband doesn't make you above reproach and you are gifted with in-home accountability through your help me, your wife. Allow her to speak in the same way you take what others say and align it with scripture. Give her that same opportunity to be used by God to speak into your life. To wash your wife with the word doesn't mean you are the living word. To protect your wife doesn't mean she is too weak to be a help me. To provide for your wife doesn't mean she is incapable of doing and you lord it over her. As believers, we all possess the same spirit, which is a free gift from the same God who views us all to be equal in the salvation of Jesus Christ. Biblical submission is not blind submission. A woman's biblical role is not doormat. We are all called to deny ourselves and serve as unto the Lord not man's egos or our own. That self-righteous spirit is not of God. To act as if you are above reproach is not of God. To throw stones but think the speck in your own eyes should not be called out is not of God. That false spirit clashes with the Holy Spirit. True believers peep game in hypocrites who love the dish but can't take the heat. True believers stay in the kitchen with fellow believers fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, because they want correction and that type of heat so God's correction don't send them to an unbearable heat. True believers understand that no man is above deception and deceiving, so they always stay on guard against the wiles of the devil. We don't put nothing past nobody. God said, trust no man. The only man you should put your full hope and faith in is Jesus Christ. The only man you should be living for is Jesus Christ. It was nothing but the revealing from God that led me to your video because I never heard of you and no one shared or tagged me in your video. God literally led me right to you to confirm everything in my spirit he has been trying to reveal to me this entire year. But I was battling with it all because I was taking man's word over God's. I was literally in fear that I was rebelling against God because I was experiencing the need to reject the teachings of Lewis and disagree with my husband. When you say it out loud, you really see how bad it is when you are not solely dependent on God and trusting man. A seared conscience is real. Deception is real. Many pastors want us worshiping them and putting our faith in them because it puts them on the same level as God. Isn't that what Satan desired? The devil comes in many forms, not just through hip hop, music and Jezebels. Knowing believers by their fruit is not a physical or fleshly revelation. It is only spiritual and you must possess the Holy Spirit to truly recognize and discern spiritual fruits. The Holy Spirit can only be received through the saving blood of Jesus Christ and only God's power can bring you to him. G. Craig's ministry has been a distraction from that very revelation since the beginning of the truth behind hip hop. He is being used as a tool of Satan to distract God's people from him and get them focused on the fear of Satan when God has not given us the spirit of fear. I became foolish by following foolish teachings, but no matter what we foolishly do in our flesh, God will get his glory in spite of the foolishness. I know this was long, but I felt led to write all of it because I know what you are doing is bold and it can be discouraging when it seems like no one is listening. But guess what? It's not meant to be heard and received by everyone. God is leading those to you whom he desires to hear and receive. Many are called, but few are chosen. 
Many will come across your videos and others' testimonies, but only a few will receive the revelation in everything that is being revealed about this man and his ministry. Be encouraged, remain humble, and allow God to lead you wherever he needs you to go. I just wanted to add that this email has been sitting in the drafts for weeks. But when I saw the testimony of the Carters, God really showed me that I'm not the only woman who is currently going through what Mrs. Carter went through in her marriage because of the brainwashing teachings of Lewis. My husband has issues with his father and gravitated to Lewis in a very unhealthy way. And he is turning into a man I no longer recognized. It is tearing our marriage apart. My husband is really trying to hear from God, but rejects my warning against what is causing him not to. Lewis's teachings is literally blinding him from seeing why God has yet to respond. I know God is trying to do something, but my strong man has been bound. Pray for freedom in his mind so he can start living in freedom in his life. Be blessed, your sister in Christ. Just wanted to read that. Um, just wanted to read that to you all. And I, I hope and pray that it was an encouragement to you. Um, be praying for this for this sister. We don't have to know her name. Um, God knows who she is. Um, Brenda, I'm glad you are. I'm glad you're in the live. Um, I, I was hoping and praying that you and uh, you and Bobby had 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 jumped on the live and, and and were listening to this. I hope and pray that you uh, that you have been blessed by this. No, they're they're not members. They were not members. She said in the letter, in the email, that uh, um, that she wasn't a member. She said, matter of fact, um, and I forget what page this was, but she said she was not a member. Um, uh, but because even though she was not a member, this man's teachings has destroyed and has wreaked havoc uh, in her in her marriage from afar. Um, so this shows you you, you don't have to be uh, within the four walls. Of a, of a building for your marriage to be destroyed. You don't have to be in the four walls of a building for your for your marriage to be to be messed up. All you have to do is give the enemy uh, a foothold. All you have to do is give the enemy access, uh, allow the deceptive teachings of, of the enemy to come into your mind first. But once it comes into your mind, it's going to come into your house. Because a man, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So be praying for the sister. Um, Again, I, I received this on, on a Monday. Um, didn't have a chance to read it uh, because of its length. And I did not want to just breeze through it and blow through it. Uh, I wanted to give my time and attention uh, to it. I did respond back to the sister and I cc my wife letting, letting the sister know that um, we appreciate it. And, and um, we praying for her. And, and so I'm asking for, for the body of Christ to be praying for uh, for this for this sister uh, is as well, but this is encouraging. Um, it, it is still encouraging because God is still delivering. God is still setting people free. Um, again, you know, don't I, I don't have a church, um, not a pastor, uh, actively speaking. Uh, but you know what? This is the ministry that God has called me to uh, to do and to reach. So. Um, I, I agree. I agree, Brenda. We do need a holy prayer session um, for for all people, for all of these people that are going through. Uh, yeah, thank you, there, uh, Sylvia. Um, if you if you would like to do that, um, my email is uh, Seiko Woods S A I K O Woods with an S at Yahoo dot com. Seiko Woods at Yahoo dot com. Um, you can send your you can send your testimony there, and if you would like to uh, uh, be a guest. Um, on the uh, on the live, um, we can do that as well. Just let me know whatever is comfortable uh, for you. But again, this is why this is why I'm, I I do this. Um, you know, my wife and I we have a burden for 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 families for couples um, because you know what, you know the children are going to see if you have children, they they see 
what you and I won't see. You know, right now behind this, you know, behind these cameras and, and, and things like that and in front of this phone that I'm sitting in front of, you know, um, yeah, I don't know what goes on in our house, but our, our kids do. I'm not saying that we up here fighting and like that. I'm not saying I'm saying, but what we are, what, what our children see in the natural, in the real, y'all don't see that on, on face on FaceTime and, and, and Facebook Live and, and, and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. You don't see that. So I say that because somebody's always watching us. And um, we can play these games if we want to, acting as though what we do doesn't matter to people. Everything we do affects someone. Everything we do affects somebody. Um, and, 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 and the sad thing about it is a lot of the things that these people are going through, they're going to churches for help, and these churches are not providing the resources and the help that they need. And I'm talking about I'm talking about people who are even going to sound biblical churches. I'm talking I'm talking about people whose doctrine is orthodox, but how they carry it out is heterodox. I mean, how, how do how do you love your neighbor as yourself and not show love? How, how do you love your neighbor as yourself and not show empathy? How do you love your neighbor as yourself and not be a listening ear or a shoulder to cry on or to be just by your presence being there? A lot of people in the body of Christ, and some of you know who they are, are going through. They, they are they are going through. And. I, I just want to encourage you. I just want to encourage those of us here in this live. This is a new day, a new year. Um, God has allowed us to see, but you know what? People are still in pain. Just, just because we say happy new year, it's not always a happy new year for everybody. Some people are just going through the motions. Some people are just saying, man, another year of this. Another year of dealing with this. Another year of tolerating this. Another year of being alone, another year of fighting this battle, another year, another year, another year. A amen, tell me. A amen. I, I, I believe that and I receive that. And this is why I'm asking for help for the saints, because we can't do this by ourselves. I Listen, I refuse to do this by myself. This, this is bigger than me. Even though we are not assembling in the local sense of a local assembly, a local church, local ecclesia. We we are the body of Christ. We we are the hands of Christ. We are the feet of Christ. We are the arms of Christ. We 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 are the people that God is sending out to help people. You know Jesus says the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. But he doesn't just stop there. He says the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. He says Beseech, that means to pray, to, to, to ask the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into his field. There are many people that are out there struggling, that are contemplating, that are fighting in their mind how they're going to make it. Not even to, to tomorrow, through today. Through today. And we need to, we need to give as much of ourselves we can to the people who need us. I, I don't know who they are. I don't I don't know a lot of these people who I who I interact with and who I correspond with and 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 and, and communicate with. I, I probably would never see these people on this side of glory. Never never probably ever see them. But you know what? This is this is this is why I make the appeals. This is why I encourage those of you who have something to say to come out and say it. This is why I encourage. This is why I spur. This is why I, you know, try to push those of you who have a testimony to come out and to assist, to come out and to encourage and to come out and speak out because you never know. 
You never know. It could be your testimony. It could be your story. It could be your life that, that God uses. Listen, that God uses to turn the tide and to turn and to shift a person's life and situation around for the better. We never know. But the, but, but the longer we procrastinate, because really procrastination is nothing but disobedience. That's all it is. It's nothing more than bottom line, flat out disobedience. James says, for the, for the one who knows what to do and does not do it, it is sin. When you and I know that we could be doing more and we don't, and we just wait to see what somebody else is going to do, God said that's sin. The Spirit of God speaks to our heart. Listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm not here to talk about the ministry of the Spirit in the sense of whether or not he gives gifts today and all that kind of stuff, and, and, and whether or not he, he, all the gifts are in operation today. That is not my concern right now. You know what my concern is right now? That those who have the Spirit of God right now obey the Spirit of God. That's my, that's my concern. What are we doing with what God has called us to do right now? Right now. This, this woman's testimony here, she's just, she's just one, she's just one of, of, of many. She's just one of many who are going through and who are experiencing pain. And some people are stronger than others. I, I believe this sister's testimony, she, she's walking in faith and trusting and believing God. But listen, she, she has feet of clay, just like the rest of us. She probably cries and she probably, you know, is wondering, Lord, when, when is this going to change? Because who wants to be in the marriage? Who wants to live in a, in a, in a, in a house where there's turmoil and strife? That could be changed, but because of pride, because of an unwillingness to, to listen and to be taught, it doesn't change. So everyone's situation is not the same. It is not. And so those of us who have either never been in a cult, never knew what it was like to be uh, manipulated and believing something is true and come to find out it is not true. Never been in a in, in, in a situation where you've been put out of a church and, and this was the only family, the only church family that you had. If you cannot relate to that, then it's, you're going to have a hard time coming alongside serving people. If you can, if you cannot even at least understand what it feels like. So just because some of us have not gone through some things, please let's not minimize it by our um, nonchalant by our uh, attitude of, well, you know, they should have known this. I, I, I've heard some people say that. And, you know, my answer it would be to them, this is the thing you should have known that you didn't do. And we all are living by the choices that we've made in our lives. But we're called, we're commanded, according to Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, we're commanded to Bear one another's burdens. That's what we're called to do. When we see our brother and sister struggling, when we see our brothers and sisters go through, to sit back and to just observe. You've already observed. You see them going through. That's your observation right there. Now it's time to take action. So for me, I may not be I may not be called to do X, Y, and Z. But whatever God has called me to do, I want to be faithful in that. And that is all I am asking. That's all I am, I am encouraging those in the body of Christ to do is to say, listen. God, you keep having me come on this dude's live every time he powers up his dog on device and he comes on live. You, you, you're not just having me come on here just to hit hearts, hearts, hearts and like, like, likes and, and laugh, laugh, laugh emojis. You, 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 you're calling me to come on here for a reason. So since you, you're calling me to come on here for a reason, then what are you wanting me to do? 
What, what, are you, what are you calling me to do, Lord? I know what he's called me to do. And it's a process. I know what he's called my wife and I to do as a couple. It's a process. But he has given us this increasing and incessant desire to help people. To come alongside and to help people in any shape, form, or fashion. Listen, we, we, we talk to people. I know I do in particular. Talk to people almost every day. Even while, even while I'm on the road, I'm on the phone talking to people. Encouraging as much as I possibly can. Uh, giving them information. Deferring them to, to other, uh, other people and other uh, uh, churches that I trust and believe that are sound. Because I know that people are looking for answers. They're looking for solutions, y'all. They're looking for someone to at least care to say, wow, this person at least told me to go to this person. And, 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 and you know, it, it gives them hope. You know why a lot of people, you know, commit suicide? Because they don't have hope. Because, it, and listen, I'm not justifying it. I'm saying in their mind, their situation is so hopeless, they don't see God being above that hopeless situation. And so they just say, well, what's the purpose of being here? Let me tell you something. By God's grace, and only by God's grace so far, listen to me when I say this, y'all. Only by God's grace so far, I have not received any information from somebody that has killed themselves as a result of what this man, G. Craig Lewis, has done to them. That is only by the sheer grace and mercy of God. Now, what I have received from people are people who have contemplated suicide as a result of what this man has done to them. I have received that. But by God's holy merciful grace I have yet to receive and I pray to God I don't because I know for myself if I am to receive or would receive any type of any type of information that a that a, a current or former member took their life because of what this man did to them you're probably going to see a different person out of me You're probably going to see a different person emerge as a result of that. Because it shouldn't take someone taking their own life for us to respond to giving ourselves to someone's life. It should not take that. And listen, we don't know what people are going through. That is my point. And we only can do what we can do. So this is not a guilt trip. This is not me trying to put any unnecessary and undue pressure on anyone. I'm speaking to the body of Christ as a whole. Those who are watching the live and those who are watch this, this, this live on YouTube later on. I'm talking to all of us. I'm talking to every last one of us who names the name of Christ, whom you know God is calling you to get involved in whatever, whatever sphere of influence, whatever means that you can do. You know that God has been calling you to do that. Never would I have imagined that I would be doing what I'm doing right now. I'm not, I, 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 I not even this this was the furthest thing from my mind. This is my this is my 31st video. I have this is now 31 videos from from October to this year to January 1st. 31. All dedicated to the purpose and for the purpose of exposing G. Craig Lewis, helping people come out of his church, helping people see that ABC 
uh, adamant believers council, what they call them. I call them another bad call. Help me people to see that that is not a biblical church. If you heard his podcast today, 30 minute sermon, quote unquote, about what? Damage control. Now you want to talk about, oh, well, I use the, I use the e-Bible on my, you know, on my device. We, we, we have Bibles here. We just have them on our computers and all that kind of stuff. If you, if you've been tracking with me, you know what that's about. It's, it's, it's damage control. And unfortunately, he has the impressionable there. Now, I'm blessed and encouraged to know that God is going to draw his elect. There are some elect people at ABC. Yes, there are. Because some of you who God drew out were some of his elect. Thank you, Sister Loretta, for saying that. And, and Loretta also said, we should not be having suicidal thoughts in church, going to church. Being amongst the saints, we should be encouraged. We shouldn't be encouraged to kill ourselves. We should not be contemplating taking our life as a result of being around people who profess to be light themselves. You see, this happens. This happens because when people don't know the truth, they only function in operation and they, they only function and operate in that which they do know. And that is lies. Because Jesus says the enemy, that's the devil. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's that's his that's his motive. And so for you and I, as Christians, we're called. This, this is not a suggestion that God called us to do. He says we are salt and light. Salt changes the flavor of that which it touches and engages in. Light dispels darkness. It provides direction and illumination. It changes the atmosphere to something that it once was not. And Jesus says to us in Matthew's gospel, chapter five, verse 13 throughout, that we are salt and light. That we are actually change agents in this, in this world. What are we doing with the salt and what are we doing with the light that we have? Because God is going to challenge us. He's going to call us to be what he has called us to be. And that is salt and light. We, we can't we can't have this mentality and attitude. That until or unless it's my toothache, then I'll start saying, ouch, no, no, no. No. And I agree, Tammy. We need to start working on the phone directory. Email list if you help us. Identify who's been through what and connect X members to the ones uh to the ones coming out dealing with the same thing. And see, right now this is what I have. This is this is what I have. I have a a, a uh I have two files. This is what I have. I have two files. I have a file for G. Craig Lewis. And I have a file for EX ABC uh, members. I have two files. And on those files, I have uh, I have uh, documents. I have uh, excuse me, I have documents, I have conversations, I have all these things because I know for myself doing research, and I know for myself making sure that. What is being said is being said so that I know that should something happen and I need to draw from these resources, I have it right here in my fingertips. But I have two files. And I have the names of people that I've, that I've, I've, I've 
you know, contacted and who have contacted me. And, and, and so we need to start. We, we need to start with a database um, and we need to do it. We need to do it via interstate areas like 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 uh, a sister mentioned, like Sister Tammy mentioned. Because praying is one thing. And I, listen, we need to pray. Listen, we need to pray. The prayerful, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much in James 5, 16. We, we need to be praying. But we also need to be putting things in action. Faith without works is dead. So we, we pray and we put feet to faith. That's what we're called to do. And so I, I, I really hope and pray that you hear my heart, that you hear the spirit and the tone behind which I'm saying this. Um, my, my concern is not G. Craig Lewis. It is not G. Craig Lewis. My concern are those people that are being manipulated and mind screwed and gaslighted and taken advantage of. Those are my concerns now. These people are the people that I'm now focusing my attention on. This is why, again, I changed, I changed the campaign. We, we are now in Operation Rescue and Renewal. That's what we're now in. G. Craig Lewis's ministry is, is done. He's done. If you, if you think this man's ministry is still alive and kicking, trust me, you, you don't really know what's really going on. Because he, he's dead in the water. His rudder is totally shot and destroyed. His ship has sunk and it's sinking. You, you don't have, he's not a threat in, in, in the sense where he is, uh, he is, uh, he is once before. Now, now we need to focus now on the people uh, that are, that are afraid to come out. People that you know that have, you have conversations with. And you need to make sure that you're being gracious. Okay? You need to be make sure you need to make sure you're, you're being understanding. Because remember, you too were once in that position. So we need to exercise grace. We need to ask for God's timing. We need to ask for the tone of our words to be seasoned with salt. We need to, we need to make sure. That the, the, the timing, the tone, and how we communicate it, and how we talk, the tact of that, we need to make sure that all of that comes off and comes across in the way that honors and glorifies God. Now, I'm not, listen, the, the philosophy that I use is, is 1 Thessalonians 5.14. Paul tells the church of Thessalonica, he says, now I urge you, he says, and, and he says, and he says, uh, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak. Notice three, three kinds of people. You have the unruly, the faint-hearted, and the weak. And then his last exhortation says, be patient with, with everyone. If we change and invert those three types of people, and we start encouraging the, un, encouraging the unruly and admonishing the faint-hearted and in rebuking the weak and not being patient with anyone. We just harmed and enabled those who don't need to be enabled in their sin. And we just harmed and destroyed and broke the spirit of those who needed to be encouraged and needed to be enabled to to come or empowered rather to come alongside and to encourage them to keep fighting and keep pushing on. So what, what God is calling us to do is to rescue. In fact, let me just read. Let me read Jude. Let me read Jude here. Verse 22, it says, and have mercy on some who are doubting. Save others, snatching them out of the fire. 
and on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. So we have, look at this. You have the doubting in verse 20, uh, in verse 22, verse 23, he says, save others, snatching them from the fire. Notice you have those who are doubtful, you have the deceived, and then you also have the devoted. Three kinds of people in that text. And notice how you are to respond to those, those kinds of people individually. The doubtful, you have mercy on. The deceive, you still try to snatch them out. He says, save others. Those are the deceived. Those are the people that, that don't even know that they're being deceived. He said, you go in there, you take them out. You bring them out. He says, snatching them out of the fire. And then he says, those who are devoted and on some have mercy with fear. Well, what does that mean? Knowing that these people are devoted, that they're not coming out. There's nothing you really can do about them. But notice, even in your interacting with them, he says, and on some have mercy with fear. Notice, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. That means when you get close to a, a G. Craig Lewis, as close as you possibly can, you don't want that deception. You don't want his his devotion to demonic doctrines to come off on you. To where now you are affected and infected by it. This is why you need to be very careful with dealing with the G. Craig Lewis's of the world. Because if you're not built for it, you're going to fall prey to them. Have mercy with fear. You, you, you make sure that although you yourself, you're not walking around arrogantly, thinking that that can never happen to you, that you can't be a G. Craig Lewis. No, 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 no. Have mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Jude uses a picture of soiled underwear. Jude uses a picture that the bodily discharge of that person's clothes, you don't even want on you. This is how filthy and how polluted and defiled this person who's devoted to false doctrine is. When you have a man talk about the sperm covering and you can't find that in scripture and he's telling, he's telling women you need, to, you need to have more sperm in you because that covers you. That's your quote unquote blood covering for the man. That's, that's listen, that's demonic doctrine. That's perversion. And so in, in, in applicable terms, you don't want that doctrine to get into your house and you teach that to your wife and your children. This is what Jude is talking about. Saying, you're saying, God, thank you. I, thank you, Lord, that that, that, that could have been me. I could have been a G. Craig Lewis. So, so therefore, I, I don't want to act as though I'm above G. Craig Lewis. But at the same time, I'm not going to let this man's teaching defile me and not defile other people. This is what this is how dangerous this kind of teaching is. But we are still to go in there. Well, Seiko, have you ever tried to reach out to G. Craig Lewis? Of course I have. Of course I have. I have his number, tried to call him, email him. He's not responding. Went through third parties, not responding. He told Fred Price Jr., like I told you before, he told Fred Price Jr. to tell me to do it. Do what do whatever you do it. Do it. And that is what I'm doing now. And all I'm saying to all of us today, tonight, this first day of the of the of the new year. This is not over. This is a rescue and renew operation. There are people in this live right now and you know it. Because you said it, you even said it publicly. You still have to detox yourself. It's like a woman, and, and I'm not, listen, I'm not 
I'm not trying to be uh, crass or anything like that. I'm just trying to give you. A, it's like a woman that have been violated, that have been sexually assaulted or raped, and they get into the shower and they try to scrub that man's body. You know his his how he touched them. He they they they're just this is how that looks. You don't want this type of teaching even on you. You don't want me defiled by it at all. And so my, my encouragement to, to all of us is, number one, this is not over. People are still hurting. People are still having to detox themselves. They're still having to scrub their mind from all the years that they've heard this stuff and, and, and noticed. And some of them, even in their heart and in their soul, they know and they knew something ain't right about this. I can't put my finger on what it is, but something is not right about what this dude is saying. But they stayed. Because during that time, where are we going to go? This is this is the place we thought was you know, this place we got taught the word. And so they thought. And then when God opens their eyes, now they realize all this time I've been duped. And so now they got to fight with the guilt. They got to fight with the regret. They got to fight with the shame. They got to fight with the embarrassment, the humiliation, all that stuff. They got to fight with it. Even those that are delivered right now have to fight with it. And while they have to fight with it, they're trying to take other people out of that place. So you have to know the kinds of people that you're dealing with. You, you got to know when you're dealing with a doubting person. You got to know when you're dealing with a deceived person. You got to know when you're dealing with a devoted person, a person that just giving themselves over to Satan. You have to know that it takes discernment. It takes prayer. It takes you knowing your Bible. You must know this book because if you don't know this book, the enemy of the book is going to own you. He's going to know you don't know it. So this is not a this is not a game. And this is why the enemy is coming at people and at some of you full board the way that he is. Trying to instill fear in your mind. Well, God ain't giving us the spirit of fear. Next. Trying to create doubt in your mind. No, 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 no. Trusting the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God. This is what we're supposed to do. This is, amen, amen, fam. This is spiritual warfare. This is not a game. This is time for the true warriors to step up and to stand up. Warriors and warriorettes, how about that? <laughs> but it's time to fight. We have brothers and sisters that, are, that are, we have brothers and sisters that are still bound. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We want to sit back and wait for God to do it? No, he's already told us what to do. He's already doing it, and he's doing it through, through people. But he's calling all of us to do our part. All of us. He's called all of us to do it. So, um, again, I, I just wanted to share that. Again, pray for the sister. Um, um, you know, if you need to talk to me, if you want to, again, uh, share your, your, your testimony, you can do that. Email me, SekoWoods at Yahoo.com. S A I K O was with an S at yahoo.com. If you want to support this ministry, you want to support what we're doing here um, by continuing to to make uh, content and also to uh, to uh, have other uh, equipment and resources that we can you know also utilize and and provide. Uh, you can do that. You can reach out to us. You can um, uh, support me through the, through the cash app. Uh, you can also like this video, like the videos that you've already been uh, uh, seeing and watching, share them on your page. I, I'm asking for those in the body of Christ. I'm asking for all of y'all share these videos, share the videos. And we like to share these little funny videos. Of everybody else. This is not a game. We need to share truth. Let's, let's start sharing more truth. Share videos that are going to help people get set free. Share these videos Go to my YouTube page under my name, subscribe and like and share those as well. These videos that I'm doing here on Facebook, I, I, I also transfer them over to my YouTube channel. So that way, those who do not have social media or do not have a, a Facebook account, I put them on my YouTube page. So that way they can have access to it as well, too. So.
However you're led to do that, do as the Spirit of God leads you and calls you to do it. But let's support the body of Christ with whatever resources and means that we have. All right. So I'm done. I'm going to close this one out. And um, like I said, just keep us in prayer. Pray for us. We're going to pray for you all. Um, reach out to each other. Uh, Sister Tammy, thank you again for that encouragement, uh, um, you know, advice and, and, and information. We need to do that. Let's not just talk about it, y'all. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. Um, again, you can in inbox me and we can um, get some information, you know, uh, started. And that way we can start trying to get uh, each other, um, get each other set up and, and, and situated with the uh, with the process of uh, getting people set free. All right. So I love you guys. You have a great evening. Whatever you do, do all to go and out of God. God bless.